So, I will be making a custom, one-of-a-kind art fashion doll of my fursona, Vivian Zarin. I've done a number of toy customizations over the years, including a couple of dolls, but they were both 112 scale. This is my first 1-6 scale fashion doll, and I am very excited. I've wanted to do one of these for years, but never really thought I could. The doll is just a random Barbie I found at Goodwill. I don't know what line she's from or how old she is, but I like that she has built-in knee articulation. It's less work that I have to do on her. I also found this toilet candle and I couldn't resist putting her on it like she's popping a high heel squat. So my fursona has been through a quite frankly ridiculous number of different designs and even species changes over the years because the last decade of my life has essentially just been one continuous identity crisis. Surely if I go through the quite frankly obscene amount of effort required to make a whole doll out of it, it has to stick, right? Right? I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna change the... I'm, I'm not going to completely redesign this character again in a few months, right? I got so frustrated with this that I actually kind of just gave up on having a Sona that represents me for the past year or so. I actually finalized this design in the process of making this doll specifically for the doll. I guess this is my way of finally saying I do and getting married to a design. <laughs> So here I am cutting Barbie's pretty blonde locks off with a cruddy pair of scissors. I definitely should have cut closer to the scalp, but the hair was kind of gross and greasy and I didn't really want to keep touching it. And then you can see me just wiping the whole doll down with some isopropyl alcohol because this doll has been at the thrift shop and I have no idea where she was before that. And considering the state of that hair, I'm probably happier not knowing where. Next up, I am removing the factory face job with some acetone nail polish remover on a cotton ball. This quickly turned out to be way, way harder than any of the doll making videos make it look. Then again, I'm probably just doing it wrong because I'm a dunce, so don't follow my example. I think maybe I tried to do the uh, scooping motion that they always talk about, but it didn't seem to be working all too well. Mother, how could you? I was once beautiful. You've taken everything that was of value to me. You've robbed me of my beauty, my individuality, my sense of identity. I am now a carbon copy of every other woman that has ever lived. I don't think that looks like a carbon copy of every <laughs> What does it look like to you, then? Chaos. Off with her head, I say! How do you feel about that? I love you. You're cute. You're, what the flump dickity? Oh god! <laughs> what? Here I am warming up the vinyl of the doll head with a hair dryer so that I can remove it. Just slip it carefully off of the neck peg so that I don't break anything. Mother, how could you? How could you be so cruel as to put me into this unlivable state? Mother, I will exact my vengeance against you. It will be cruel. Your torment will be unending. <laughs> You're insane. <laughs> You're insane! It's How? the voice that you have chosen to give it. It's just so... I don't know. How am I insane? <laughs> Here I go, removing the hair plugs from the inside of the doll's head with a pair of tweezers. I found the motion of scraping against the inside of the head to be quite effective at collecting them. Once again, this turned out to be much more difficult and time consuming than I expected it to be. Oh yeah, it also made the tips of my tweezers somewhat sticky and I'm not entirely sure how to get rid of that, so that's wonderful. 
Hey, baby. You want to know the nasty little truth of the matter? Huh. The, the, the rotary tool was swiped, and not only is the battery dead, but Dad was using it to trim his toenails. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I want this Barbie to have elbow articulation, so I cut her elbows in half and cut these notches into either side of them, into which I could glue these bootleg Lego mixel joint pieces. I initially tried to do it with hand tools just sitting up in bed because I was watching the Spy Girls movie with my girlfriend and I just really wanted to spend some time with her. But ultimately I ended up going downstairs to my workshop to use my rotary tool to finish the job and that was a lot more efficient. This left some unsightly gaps that had to be filled in. I used Crayola Model Magic to fill them in, which is not at all the ideal material, but it worked. This looks pretty messy, but by the time I get paint over it, it uh, turns out okay. Around this point, I also sanded the body down to make it more amicable to acrylic paint, and especially sanded down the chest a little because I want her to have smaller boobs to be in alignment with my own body type. I was painting the body white as a base when suddenly... Uh, you bat bat? Bat! I think? There was a bat on my ass! There's a bat on the floor right next to you on the ground. He's... <laughs> oh. Oh dear. There. I there. just don't want to get bit by it, you know what I mean? Hi, little guy, what are you doing? Okay. <laughs> There's a bat! I don't know how that got in here. Whoa! Oof, baby! Child! Sir! Buddy! Go get the... go get the... the net. At last, the bat was captured and released outside. I tried to sculpt a custom lemur face onto the Barbie head, but I didn't love the way that it looked, so I just swapped it for a Parista Girl head from one of my extra Parista Girl dolls using another bootleg Lego Mixel joint. The end result looks pretty good, but what about the opposite side of this swap? Mother, why? How could you do this to me? Now on to the face up. It's nice having a detachable head for this. The character's facial markings are heavily clown and circus influenced, so I'm starting by blocking out the major regions of the makeup. While I'm at it, I'm also going to paint the red sock monkey inspired candy stripes onto the body. This really helps to cover up those unattractive joins between the bootleg mixel joints and the Barbie plastic that I patched up with the Crayola model magic. And yes, I paint without pants on. It's just easier to not ruin my clothes that way. It looks like I forgot to record the dark blue detailing, but at this point I'm cleaning up the edges with some more white paint. This is stressful and time consuming, but really makes a big difference. Now getting on to the finer details of the face with blocking in her jolly red eyes. And now going around the eyes with black paint. There is really no way out of this being a hassle. Finally adding those toony little eye shines that make all of the agonizing worth it in the end. After that, and after sealing everything, I brush some gloss Mod Podge over the moist tissues of the face. That being the eyes, the nose, and the lower lip. Now for the hair. I make wefts out of this beautiful red yarn, which I then curl with screwdrivers and a hairdryer. I attach the wefts to the doll's head using Elmer's glue. There is a lot of waiting for the glue to dry between layers so that the hair doesn't get all matted together. You only have hair on the back of your head, so like... It looks like your so like it looks like your character is um, struggling with severe late stage male pattern baldness. I fucking love you. 
At a certain point, you start adding yarn wefts to the front of the character's head where their bangs would be as well until the two sections meet somewhere in the middle and there are a few ways you can close that gap. Uh, it, it's not especially difficult, but it is very, very tedious and time consuming. Now on to the haircut, which I do off camera because it is a very finicky process with no undo button. The hair is complete. I like how uneven the curls came out, where some of them are very tight ringlets, some are kind of just waves, because it really recreates how having curly hair in real life is. I will be making the tail with a length of wire and this red and white fleece. It is very soft. Now I'm cutting the fleece into small strips that will be stitched together in alternating configuration to create the candy striped tail. I have just folded the resulting panel in half and am stitching up the open side, make sure to stitch in a curve around the end of the tail. The tail is right side out now. I have wrapped the end of the wire with upholstery foam and a little bit of masking tape so that it doesn't have as harsh of an edge that might rip through the seam. And then I will just stuff polyfill around it, gradually filling it up to the end. Last step for creating the tail, I sew a basting stitch along the edge, which I can pull tight like a drawstring bag to gather the edges and ensure no stuffing will escape, and I just make sure to tie that off nice and tight. I apply a small bit of Gorilla Glue to the hole I drilled in her backside earlier, slip the wire and side, and hold it in place with my girl strengtheners as the glue dries. Now it's time to make her clothing. I start with this dark blue and white striped fabric. I cut two strips, a shorter, narrower strip to form the bodice, and a longer, wider strip to form the skirt. The bodice strip is cut to the doll's bust measurement. I sew a basting stitch on one end, which can be used to gather, creating a narrower end for the waistband. I then gather one side of the strip skirt and attach it to the waistband as well. I finish the skirt and the neckline with some white ribbon featuring red heart decorations. To cover her naked shoulders, I threw together a bolero by modifying a pattern I got from Shellywood.com. Finally, I have these Barbie shoes I got at the Dollar Tree. I cut them and changed the shape a little before painting them. Some extra bling and accessories, and finally, my bouncy circus lemur is complete. Meet Vivian Zarin. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed.